I'm Jake Bruton with Aero Building in Columbia, Missouri in Kansas City. And today I wanted to talk to you about the parka I already took off because I got too hot in my truck and continuous insulation, really. Let's do it now. Okay, so in Columbia, Missouri today, it is negative three with a wind chill of like negative 15. That is absolutely unseasonably cold for us, for our market, for climate zone 4A in the middle of the United States uh, this early in winter. However, it happens. And when I went to leave the house, even though I already took it off because I got warm in the truck, uh, I put on my True Work parka that uh, when I ordered it, they said, just so we're clear, that's like for Arctic work. And I was like, yeah, I don't care. I don't like the cold and I want the heaviest coat that you, that you make. So sell me that one, please. Uh, that parka goes over my entire upper body and it is continuous over my entire upper body. I have heard multiple times Joe Stebrick make the joke, um, we don't put our coat on and then cut out where our bones are. Uh, because then that would be discontinuous and it wouldn't do a good job of keeping us warm. But in effect, that's what we do when we build with traditional uh, platform framing construction methods in North America. We put the studs up and then we insulate between them. And therefore then the, the stud has to act as framing member and insulation. And wood is a poor insulator. Uh, I mean, it's better than gold or copper or brass, but it's still a pretty bad insulator. Uh, so that parka should apply, I mean, the same physics apply, right, to our buildings. So that's where we talk about continuous insulation. So starting with continuous insulation, let's talk about definitions. What is it? What does it mean? Uh, what are some of the things that we might use to create a continuously insulated wood framed assembly? So continuous, unbroken. It's not gonna be completely unbroken because we're gonna have doors and windows, but we're gonna talk about unbroken in the wall assembly, not counting windows and doors. So uh, if it is continuous, then we get full R value out of it. And we'll come back to that in a minute. Uh, the continuous insulation covers all of our framing uh, on the project, meaning we have studs, we have sometimes weather barrier and then insulation outboard of that. It is outside insulation the same way my coat is outboard insulation. It sounds tricky at first, and I will tell you that the first time that you actually install it, it will seem very tricky too, but it's not. So what kind of products are on the market that are readily available for most people in most markets and easy to come by and easy to install? Well. Uh, for starters, we use the most, we use Zip R. I understand there's an argument there about maybe it's an outboard because it has zip system on the outside. There's a debate there, but for our pur the purposes of what we're talking about, it is outboard of our framing members. So that's number one, we have a, a, a Zip R. What is Zip R? Zip R is basically a sheet foam with zip on the outside. So sheet foam works. XPS, EPS, uh, GPS, all those sheet foam insulations if they're installed on the outside of the framing, that is then a continuous insulation. Rockwell makes a great comfort board, semi-rigid or mostly rigid, I would say. Uh, Rockwell insulation that can be fastened on the outside of the building. Rockwell's benefit is it is not harmed by any water. So you could put your weather barrier on and then put your Rockwell on and then attach your siding right over top of that and it won't matter if it gets wet from time to time, if your siding leaks, if your cladding leaks, whatever it is. Uh, it's not gonna hold that water. It's not gonna be damaged by that water. So that's a great one. So all of these insulations are enough to cover over the outside of the building. Think of it as putting the coat on like we talked about. That's a difficult thing to do sometimes when you start to wrap your brain around it, but it absolutely is not difficult once you start it. Yeah, you might have to use a different fastener if you're using Rockwell's Comfort Bat. You might have to have something with a big cap that then has a long fastener to fasten strapping for your rain screen and then, so like, there are some changes. It's not the same thing, but you're not building the same house when you do this. So we have to keep that in mind as well. It is a different thing. Next, we have to talk about uh, why that insulation is better than the studs with the cavity insulation. And I alluded to it earlier, and it's the continuity of it. It is the unbroken nature. It is the 
title of the video, continuous nature of the insulation. Every time we have a framing member, that framing member is part of our R value calculation. So if you have uh, an R19 bat in your wall and then a two by six stud, the R19 counts as an R19 where it is, and then the stud counts as like a close to R5, wherever it's located. So now we have two different R values for the same assembly, and people will say, oh, well, I have an R19 wall. No, you have R19 insulation in a wall that also has windows, doors, and wood framing, and that wood framing everywhere you have it is an R5. So that unbroken nature then means if we add continuous insulation on the outside, that continuous insulation now becomes R5 at the stud, and then the R value added wherever it is on the outside. Uh, so if, say, we were to use a zip R9, we'll just talk about zip because we use that a lot. Zip R9, now where that, that two by six stud is, is a five plus nine, and now we have a nine where we had a five before. And now where we had 19, we have 19 plus nine, we have 28. So now we have an upgraded insulation across the entire assembly. That R value gets to be added just plus R. So that, that bump in insulation, you're never gonna get a better value for your dollar insulation wise than you are for continuous because the continuous, you get the full R value. You're not unbroken. You're not um, you know, bogged down by framing members that take away from it. Um, so let's, we've come a long way. Let's talk about where code is. So I know that everybody in that, that's watching this, your municipality goes off of a different um, IRC code, or maybe there is no IRC. We're, uh, we're looking at, as a company, operating on 21. We operate in markets that are 12, that are 15, that are nine, and then none. So we know that advancements are coming, so we just try to adopt one code company-wide, no matter if we're in the Columbia market or the Kansas City market, or even a remote market in Missouri that we might compete in, all those markets we stick to, let's just operate on whatever the newest code is, assuming it doesn't contradict in a negative way other things that we're wanting to work on. And so we're working on 21. Well, if you look at the 2021 code, what does it say for wall insulation? We're just gonna talk about walls because Attics, the, the continuous insulation there, it's a different argument. That's a different animal. Maybe I'll make another video some other time. 2021 for climate zones three and up. So three through whatever it is, eight, I think. Uh, they're all the same. That wall assembly is an R20 cavity with continuous five. Oh, sorry, I should back up. Uh, there is one, one aspect here that like, this is outside of uh, performance path where you just have to meet performance standards. Uh, this is this is if you're just going to go by the R values in the chart in the code book. So uh, number one is 20 cavity plus five exterior. So there are sections of the wall that will be an R25, but there are also sections of the wall that will be an R10 because you have a stud or roughly an R10, a 10 with five continuous. The next alternative is you could do an R13 with a 10 exterior, which means you could actually build a two by two, two by four wall that would have code recognized R values for today's performance in IRC 2021. That means that R10, that continuous R10, that's a big number then. Like, that's how the code views it, is that a two by four wall with cavity insulation and then R10 outboard is the same in the eyes of the code as a two by six wall with R5 outboard. So there's the, oh, that's the first like, oh, continuous R is a big deal from an engineering standpoint. Like the people who have the science behind this understand that this is the right way to do it. But if you really wanna be impressed, the third allowable assembly is zero cavity insulation and in a continuous 15. So now we've gone from an R25 down to an R23, down to an R15, but our continuous has continually gone up. That wasn't supposed to be a pun. And now we have an assembly where we have zero cavity insulation and everything is outboard. 
That's how important the code sees it. Continuous is king in this aspect, and it is important, and I think that it is something that, like, if you read that one little bit of the code and you sit and think about it, you're gonna go, man, that continuous installation is probably more important than I ever thought it was early in my career. Uh, even I did when I first read that in the 21 update. So, what is the benefit of putting that outboard other than you get the continuous R value jump? Well, the big one that we always talk about is vapor management. Vapor is managed by dehumidifying, by source control, which is dehumidifying, uh, by limiting airflow, and by warming the assembly that it has access to. So if your assembly has um, not enough insulation in it, which I've been told the rule of thumb is kind of like 30% outboard if you're in a cold climate, if your assembly doesn't have enough insulation outboard, then the condensing surface of the wall, the point at which the wall gets below the uh, dew point and, and condensation could happen due to temperature and um, moisture levels, that level happens somewhere in the wall if you don't have continuous insulation. There's going to be a point where the wall gets cold enough that it could become a condensing surface. But if you have insulation outboard, especially insulation that's unharmed by moisture, that insulation brings the temperature of the wall higher, raises the temperature of the wall above that condensation point. And if the wall, if the entire assembly's temperature is above uh, dew point, then you don't have a risk of condensation. So think of it this way. If you put R90 outside your wall and it was all just like sheet foam of some sort or rock wool that's not bothered by water, then it doesn't matter if condensation happens in the insulation layer outside the WRB. And then the inside is no different, the framing becomes no different than your grandmother's rocking chair that you, that you inherited when you started having kids. It's inside the conditioned envelope, it's inside the building, and the temperature swings and the moisture swings are not to a point where they're gonna harm the building. There's why the code is saying this. I think that that's the main driving force behind the code. I haven't read, read the commentary on this, but I have a feeling that that's like the biggest aspect of what's going on here. We're going above the, the point of condensation. You know, we're raising the condensing point, uh, or the temperature above point of condensation in the wall. And uh, the benefit is we have that outboard insulation. We get a better R value for our dollar when the insulation is outboard because we get to count the whole R value. So there you go. I would say the three takeaways are continuous is more important than cavity. The code agrees with continuous is more important than cavity. I think it's probably a pretty decent idea to try to use something that's not bothered by moisture if it's outboard uh, because the WRB is probably inboard of it. And you control vapor by controlling for thermal. As we always talk about, that's why thermal is last in my book. Um, so there you have it. This week on the Build Show, make sure that you sign up for the newsletter. I'm going to start saying you have to sign up this week, every week. Uh, I want everybody to sign up so that you don't miss anything when it comes to the newsletter, uh, because the newsletter is the key to all of our videos. There's like at least 12 new videos a week on Build Show Network, and you're gonna miss it if you don't sign up for the newsletter. Uh, number two, oh, and I'm very proud to be part of the, the Build Show. I want you guys to see these videos because I'm learning from them every week. Uh, even when it's something that I might disagree with, I go, oh man, I wonder if I'm wrong on that. I wonder if I'm the one that's wrong and that's why I disagree with it. Number two, don't forget to follow the uh, Unbuild It podcast. That's myself, Steve Basic, and Peter Yost. Every Thursday, there's something awesome. We're talking about building, building science, the business of building. Uh, a lot of overlap with the stuff that we talk about here, but we get a different, uh, a couple different takes. You get the consultant, the architect, and the builder, and uh, you get us arguing and bickering with each other like children because we're close friends. Uh, and then don't forget to follow me on Instagram. And I, uh, I thank you for watching today. And uh, we're gonna play one game. If you are still watching at this point in the video, I've had a couple people notice that when I do the truck videos, there are, uh, I believe now, four different trucks that I've made truck videos in. Uh, our company owns company vehicles and there are times when I do not drive my own company vehicle. 
send me a message on Instagram or comment on the Instagram post promoting this video with what truck, what model you think I'm driving uh, today because I've yet to make one in this truck because I don't normally drive this truck. So have a good day. Thanks for watching.